Hi, I'm Linda Hendrickson here in my studio in Portland, Oregon. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this loop handle for a tablet woven dog leash. A number of years ago, I wrote an article uh, for Hand Woven Magazine that appeared online, uh, Tablet Woven Leashes for Spike and Jones. And um, you can download this for free if you go to the website. Um, this page has the instructions for making the loop, uh, and what I'm going to be doing this in the video is a little bit simpler than what I'm sh showing in the article. And the article also has all the directions for threading direction and turning the tablets and the um, graphs for all of the letters that are based on Gil Sands and also uh, dog paw prints. So I've already threaded the threads through the tablets. I've got my background color, which is green in A and B, and the design color in C and D. And I've evened up the ends. Uh, so now I'm ready to start making the warp. So I'm going to tie a slip knot in the end, leaving a, oh, about a four inch tail. And then I'm gonna go down to the peg over here and put the slip knot on this end and tighten it up. If you happen to encounter a knot or run out of yarn uh, while you're warping, uh, make sure that you tie, tie any knots down at this end because you're going to be weaving up here and you don't want a knot there. I've finished making my warp and I've also arranged the tablets for a checkerboard design. And uh, I've also put um, choke ties on each half of the warp. And this indicates the area that I want to weave. So from here to here is where I want to weave the loop. And I've also put a choke tie at the far end. So what I'm going to do is move these tablets a little bit toward the far peg and these just a little bit this way for a minute and then I'm going to be pulling the warp about that much so I've got the part that I'm going to weave is right here Okay, now that I have my warp in the position to weave, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take a little cone here from my collection and put it right here. And that is just going to provide a little space between these two halves because I'm not doing anything with this half, so I just want it a little bit out of the way. Okay, now the next thing, I've got these two little stiff wefts that are going to go in first, and that will help me get the correct width. And then I have these two little tiny pieces of yarn that I'm going to tape down to where the weaving is supposed to occur. So I'm going to put these two little pieces right here. So just kind of to the left of the choke tie. And then I'm going to take a little piece of tape and just tape one of these pieces of yarn right there to indicate that's where I'm supposed to start weaving. And the other one at the other side. And right under this. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is to put a warp spreader in here. And might as well put it under everything. Keep these out of the way and spread these out. So I'm just going to put four tablets in each one of these little spaces, more or less. I feel that the warp spreader is really important. Uh, 
makes it easier to turn the tablets and uh, I think you actually get a better selvage when you use one. So now I'm ready to start weaving. I'm going to turn the tablets backward and I'm going to turn them twice for each one of these wefts and that's going to take completely change the position of the yarns from top to bottom and bottom to top. And um, put in the second one. Okay. And now I'm ready to start weaving with yarn. Oh my. Now I have to get everything ready to shift the warp back into its original position. So I'm going to remove this cone. Cone isn't really necessary if you've got a warp spreader. You can separate them like this. And now I need to take out the warp spreader temporarily. Um, I want to be sure that I have this uh, weft yarn on top, going on top of this section. And then I'm going to remove these two wefts. Now, when I started weaving, I turned the, the tablets twice backward for each one of those two wefts. So I've got some twists that I'll need to deal with once I get everything back into its original position. So now I'm just going to shift the warp. And bring these tablets back here. So now I've got the loop woven, and now I'm ready to just go ahead and start. To, well, I have to undo the twist, and then I can start weaving with all the tablets. I've finished taking out the twist as much as I could. And uh, the way I did it was to put in the warp spreader. So I've got everything that kind of the opposite as it was before. I've got these tablets out of the way, and then I've spread these out. And then I, I just had to go one by one looking at how much twist there was and if possible, you know, turning them whichever way it needed to go. The reason that you have to do it that way is because um, you, you put twist in, you know, during the warping and also when you're flipping and rotating the tablets to create the whatever design you want to set up. So there's varying amounts of twist there and I just got it back. So it looks pretty good more or less, and now I'm going to start weaving. So the first thing, let's say I'll just push these tablets together and I'm just going to spread these out. Okay, so to start weaving, uh, right now this weft is just going through this half of the warp, so I want to get that going through the other half. And I'm also going to take this little tail, this is the beginning of the weft, and I'm just going to push it through the other way. So I've actually got two wefts right there. 
and I'm going to pull them together like that. And then I'll go ahead and start turning and weaving. <laughs> 